Is bluing 3D printed metal parts even possible? Hi everyone, this is Jesse Hawer, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkard Systems, and welcome to Episode 10 of 3D Printing Thursdays. The term bluing covers quite a few different metal post-processing techniques, but at their core they all involve the application of some sort of coating that protects the metal from rust while also giving it a bit of a cosmetic upgrade. So, over the course of this video, we'll be taking a look at two different bluing methods and also explore how viable they are when used on 3D printed steel. Okay, so jumping right on into it, we'll start with the faster of these two techniques, which is called hot bluing. For the hot bluing method, you'll want some way to clean your parts and then a way to heat the parts, like an oven, kiln, or even just a simple blowtorch like I'm going to use here. Once you heat your part, it's then submerged in oil, which starts polymerization and creates a sort of barrier around the metal. I'm using standard canola oil here, but any oil should work. After the part cools, it's good to go. Now, bluing on its own doesn't actually change the surface finish of a part, so before going through this, you can do any cosmetic post-processing you want. We have a video on how you can easily create mirror finish 3D printed metal parts, which I've linked in the description if you'd like to give that a watch. But for this example, we've opted to quickly run our parts through a belt sander to clean them up a bit. The next step of cleaning the parts is super important because any skin oils or other types of greases can show up on the part even after bluing. Acetone or other degreasers are super useful for cleaning parts here. Once the part is clean, we just need to heat it up between 550 and 750 Fahrenheit. For many steels, this will be around the temperature that you will start to see it turn purple and blue. Different temperatures can also give you different end result colors though. You will want to make sure the part doesn't get red hot though, as this will cause the oil to not adhere properly, and temperatures this high can also ruin the properties of some metals. When the part is hot enough, you simply submerge it in your oil to create a delicious and nutritious deep fried piece of metal. The oil should immediately burn into the surface of your part, so after it's cooled, you can remove it, and that's it. I really enjoyed testing this process, mostly because, well, blowtorch, but also because it was cool to see such an immediate effect on our parts. As you can tell, the part turns more black than blue when submerged at the correct heat, but I was able to get some parts to turn a nice bronze color when kept at the lower end of the temperature range I mentioned earlier as well. And since this is just a topical coating, it's not permanent, so if the results don't turn out how you want, you can just sand off the bluing and start over again. Alright, so now that we've covered a bit of hot bluing, let's move on to the second common method, which is called cold bluing. Now, this process involves using chemicals to create the protective layer around our part. There's actually quite a few similarities between the hot and cold bluing process, and we'll get right to it with this one by using an A2 press break. We have just a bit of oxidation on this part, so like with our hot bluing example, we'll clean up the surface a bit with a belt sander and Dremel. Once we have our surface at the finish we want, we'll degrease the part here as well. Even as a different process from hot bluing, this is pretty important for cold bluing as well, because again, skin oils or any other type of grease can have a huge impact to the bluing chemical application. With the part itself clean, we'll move immediately to using the bluing chemical. There's a lot of options for chemical bluing, but here I'm using some Birchwood KC Super Blue. At least for this option, you always want to make sure to put the liquid into a separate container 
and then apply it to the part with a brush or swab. The chemical reaction does start immediately upon contact with the metal, so if you do put the part directly into the original container, it will ruin the rest of the bottle. And again, just like with hot bluing, it's pretty wild to see the metal change color even as you brush on the cold blue liquid. Once a nice even coat is applied, the excess can be washed off with cold water, and then you want to dry the part after that. Once the part is dry, it can be moved on to the very last step, which is to cover the whole part in oil and leave it sitting for at least 12 hours. No deep fried oil part this time, but the step here helps to seal any pores that are remaining in the chemical layer while it cures. After at least 12 hours have passed, all we need to do is wipe off the remaining oil and the part's ready to be put to use. Once again, blackening would probably be a more accurate term than bluing, at least for these results, but it's definitely a nicer looking coat and now we've got a part that's more protected from future rust while it's in use. So both of these bluing methods are absolutely possible on the MarkForge 3D printed metal parts we used. So the question is, which one's better? And the totally non-committal answer here is it depends on the part. Both hot and cold bluing provide good protection against rust, but if rust prevention is the only goal, then simply varnishing a part would probably be the better choice. Cosmetically, they both improved the look of our parts, and I personally prefer the lighter look of our press brake, but our darker gripper also looks great. Hot bluing is definitely much faster and more straightforward compared to cold bluing, which has that 12 hour wait after applying the chemical solution. So if turnaround time is a factor, then that is something to consider. That being the case, larger parts may run into issues with hot bluing since it's obviously harder to keep a large part evenly heated if you don't have a kiln or something like that. And small parts can also run into issues with heat since features can get damaged if heated too much, like in the unfortunate example of our bottle opener. And the temperatures used for hot bluing can also ruin heat treatment, so there is that to think about as well. And speaking of heat treatment, the type of metal being used will also impact the bluing process decision. Despite the very clear and obvious label statement that Birchwood Casey does not work on stainless steel, I wanted to see what happened when it was applied to 17.4, you know, for science. And the answer is nothing. Nothing happens. Hey, you can't say we didn't try. Our small gripper part is a stainless steel part though, so hot bluing will definitely work for that type of metal. So all in all, I think I would recommend hot bluing for general usage with medium sized parts and cold bluing for parts that are either too large or too small, or where you only want to protect a specific area of the part, like maybe a through channel that would be impossible to target with hot bluing. They do both produce great results though, so as long as the limits of these methods are considered before usage, you can't really go wrong. Thanks so much for joining us today for the season finale of 3D Printing Thursday. I had a lot of fun working with these methods during the making of this video, and I hope that it was informative. Feel free to discuss the topic in the comments and add your own experiences. We have a lot more 3D printing and SOLIDWORKS related content coming, so check back in on the Hawkward Systems YouTube channel for more videos. And as always, happy printing everyone.